uh, when this comes out, um, a mutual friend of ours will have just had his state funeral, Shane Warning. You sent me a really kind message saying, yeah. mate, I hope you're going okay. And I appreciated that. He was like you, Bozza. Yeah. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but he was a larger than life character that made people smile, which is what you do. Yeah. I know you will have met him around the traps and at Fox and at various functions. I never saw you two in the same room, but it would have just been a laugh off and a smile off. It's something I wish I would have had the chance to see. Yeah, it's even when you're talking about it, I, I can just feel emotion coming through. Um, I, like I said, I, I, I don't think I, I can remember spending a night with him or so forth, but I always remember, well, number one, what everyone else remembers of, uh, of how much joy um, that he brought um, to, to all Australians during the 90s because I was over there um, at that time. Yeah. And uh, there was only one test series that we lost while I was over there. That was in 2005. But even in that series, I think he took 37 wickets. And that was one of the greatest test series of all time. Uh, I used to go visit them, um, the, the Australian test team. Um, I went to see them in, I think, 1993. I definitely went to see them in 1997 and for the World Cup in 1999. Um, so I, I used to always say hello. I saw him a couple of times, I think at his, at his nightclub, just, and I said hello to him. Um, and, uh, I, I'm very, very good friends, obviously with Dwight York and Brian Lara. They used to always speak very, very highly of him. Um, but I, I was really speechless. So I'm, I'm so terribly sorry, um, for, for his family and his children. And, uh, and it's a massive loss. Um, so, so far as I'm concerned, I mean, when I grew up, obviously, we had a pantheon of, of great sports people, um, yeah. both men and women. Uh, we always knew about Sir Donald Bradman, even though we didn't have the opportunity to watch him. Um, Betty Cupford, um, her, you know, her exploits at the 1956 Olympic Games. Uh, Rod Laver and so many tennis players I, I could keep going. Uh, and, and cricketers that I grew up with, you know, Dennis Lilly, Rod Marsh, Greg Chappell comes to mind. Um, but... He, uh, for me, he's right up there with uh, the greatest sports uh, people that, uh, that Australia's ever produced. And it's a terrible loss, an absolute terrible loss. And, um, you know, it, it's hard. It's, it's really, really hard to take because you know how much of a cricket fan I am. Those who are, who are listening and, and don't know, I'm a massive cricket fan. And to know, and, and it must be difficult for yourself, is listening to yourself and, and him and, and Alan Gilchrist and everyone else during the summer. Um, and when that news came through, like I said, it was only a couple of days after Rod Marsh, of course. So um, it, it was it was terrible. And like I said, may he rest in peace. But his contribution will never be forgotten. Yeah, it's beautifully spoken, mate. It's, it, I don't knowing you and seeing you around the traps at Fox Sports. Hmm. Um, you'd always start talking about cricket, and you 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 know you send me the odd message about cricket and what what you've just gone through there. Talking about, you know, you, you've nailed the number of wickets he took in the 2005 Ashes. You've got the series right. We, did you play cricket as a young fella? Because I did. I yeah. did. I, so yeah, tell I me always, about Bozzer the cricketer. I'm fascinated. Well, that's I, I always tell Mark Wall when I see him, I say, you know, how, like I say, how lucky are you? He's, he's going to be, why? why? He, and I say, well, imagine if I decided to play cricket, you'd hardly have played for Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So from a young age, um, I would say from, uh, I think from age eight or nine, uh, I started playing with my local team and, I don't know if it's still a record, um, but my cousin and I, um, Peter Surgeon, we we got the opening partnership record one day against Moorbank for Preston's. It was none for 200 on the morning because we used to play from 8.30 to 11.15 if it was a, a two-week game or yeah. from 8 o'clock to 12 if you have the limited overs game. So I'll have to check that. I'm sure it was under 10s. Uh, it was definitely a record at the time. It was none for 200. But the funny thing about it, he was 101 and they told me because we declared um, because we wanted to win outright, which if people don't know what outright means, yeah. obviously we wanted to, to win, like, you know, you do in test cricket over two innings, you used to get 12 points for that. The only used to get six points for a, <laughs> a first first innings win. And I remember coming off saying, look, oh, we're sorry, but, you know, you got 88. But we had to declare because, you know, we got only had, you know, a, about mm. 45 minutes or so. And then next week as well, we want to bowl them out twice. I was like, okay, no problem. And then after, after we, we had them about four for about 16 at, at like, you know, when, when stumps were pulled, it's, it sounds funny saying stumps are pulled at 11, 15, but yeah. uh, they, and then the score, the score guy, the, the guy who scored came over and went, actually, we made the mistake. You only got 77 on it. I went, oh. shit, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> so did you ever make a hundred? I did. I did. Then. I did. I did. I did. I did. I, made, I made a couple of hundreds. I, I, I did. Then I, when I 
played for Mount Pritchard. That was with uh, Brad Fittler as well. We used to play together. Right. Uh, and Jason Taylor, the, the rugby league player. So I did. I, I did end up making hundreds. But um, it was a great time. And and my dad used to like, he still tells a story. He goes, that was one of the saddest days in his life when I decided um, to give up cricket because it was in, in uh, overlapping too much with football. So he said, you know, he used to say, what a difference to football. He goes, I can go to the cricket. I can look at the form guide. The ladies <laughs> make give me a cake. It's so relaxing. Yeah, he goes, he goes to football and he's on edge. What's going to happen? And this, that, and the other people are shouting, this, that, and the other. Um, but they were, that, yeah, they were really great days. I really had a great time, made some really good friends. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We appreciate your support. Now, if you want to hear the full podcast, you can just click on the link directly below. If you want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, which would be fantastic, bang, click right there. And if you want to see more clips, highlights and updates from the Howie Games, just go that way. Thanks so much. As always, take it easy and peace and love.